Uh oh, the latest meme here on Facebook. It says coronavirus adds up to 666. You got the C3O15R18015 and 14A1. Six letters, it adds up to 666. Oh my goodness. Is the coronavirus the mark of the beast? Let's find out. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. So, let's look to his word. Check this out. What's it say here? Uh, no, that's not the one. Here we go. The mark of the beast. Let's see what's, what's up with that. It's in Revelation. And the third angel followed them, saying, With a loud voice, if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Uh-oh which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So what's the mark of his name? Let's go to the next precept here. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred and three score six. So this mark is specifically um, put in your either your right hand or, or your forehead. And you won't be able to buy or sell. Some believe it's some sort of chip that they're putting in. I think that could be true. I don't think it's the coronavirus. I think that um, you know the devil's subtle and and he's you know you know the prince of this world. And he's causing a lot, a lot of this uh, this pain and this disorder right now. Um, but that has to happen, um, and because he's going to be actually uh, put put on the throne. Um, and, and he's going to rule over this this earth uh, for seven years, manifest in the body as, um, of a man. It'll be the Antichrist. But uh, we don't look for the Antichrist, and uh, I hope you aren't either. Um, you know, I pray that maybe you would have some fear for the, for for God, and not want to be in His wrath. So, if anything, um, receive not the mark of the beast, but receive this gospel. Okay. So let me get to the scripture on uh, how you can actually. Avoid the mark of the beast. There's only one thing you must do to avoid the mark of the beast, okay? So in Ephesians 1.13, it says this. It says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, to the praise of his glory. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints. So, back here it says, in whom ye also trusted. So we're going to trust them. But when are you going to trust them? After that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also that after ye believed, ye were, ye were sealed. So you're going to have to first hear the gospel of your salvation. All right. And then you're going to have to believe it, right? And then after you believe it, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And it's actually your um, purchased possession at that point. So uh, I'd rather be in the possession of God instead of, um, you know, um, possessed by the mark of the beast or by this devil that is trying to, you know, he's going to take over. Um, he's going to cause all both small and great to take that mark. And then those people will be in torment. Um, but we still have time to believe this this gospel. So how what is that gospel of our salvation um, that we can believe and be sealed with? Okay, I'll show you. It's in Acts 13. Uh, 13. So hopefully there's a little fear of God instilled um, in you uh, because that's, that's the only way you're really going to be ready to hear this and believe it. Um, that's, what, that's the way Paul put it when he preached to these people here in Acts 13. He said, uh, and whosoever among you feareth God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. So those of you who do fear God and do worry about this soul and uh, after death or, um, you know, our creator, 
that's a good thing. I would I would worry too. I, I you know, but we know now we have uh, we have peace. This is called the gospel of peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. So now we have peace, knowing that we can rest in Him. So for they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. So this is the Jewish people that he came to, Jesus Christ. They were his own people, actually. And they just, they were ignorant. They they rejected him. Uh, they were prideful. And uh, they rejected their king. Um, and though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. So there was no reason for him to die. He, they, Pilate said that he, this man is innocent. And it was a custom for them to release uh, on Passover uh, one of the prisoners. And so he was uh, saying, he was suggesting, you know, let Jesus go. You know, he hasn't done anything with it. They said, no, uh, let, Barab let Barabbas free. And he's a murderer. Barabbas is a murderer. They wanted a, a murderer to be released over an innocent man. And uh, you know, Pilate, Pilate uh, was obedient to, to the Jewish request, to the people's request. He said, okay, fine, you have it your way. But the, guess what? The blood is not on my hands anymore. So he washed his hands of the blood of Jesus. And he said, let's, let, you know. And then so the people, the Jewish people said, let this blood be on our hands and our children's hands. So it's, you know, very apparent that the Jews take full ownership of, of crucifying Jesus to the cross, with, cross without cause. And when he died on that cross for our sins, they took him down from the sep from the tree, and they laid him in a sepulcher. But God raised him from the dead, and he was seen many days of them, which came up from him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who were as witnesses unto the people. So that's the gospel report that you have to receive. All right, it's pretty plain and clear. It's that Jesus, being God, came in the flesh as the man Christ Jesus. He came to his own people, the Jews, who condemned him ridiculed him, um, and, cr and crucified him without cause. He died on that cross, not in vain, but for the payment for all the sins of the world, every single person's sin. And then he was buried, and then he rose from the grave, and he was seen alive. Actually, over 500 people saw him alive, according to the scripture, 1 Corinthians 15. So, if you look down... Um, 39, it says, And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. So just by believing that gospel that I've just preached, that's how you can receive the, the Spirit of God and eternal salvation only found in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so in John 1, Let's give it to you real quick here. A couple lines here. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Okay, so look at that. He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. But as many as received Him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So we have the power, right? The gospel is the power of God. To become the sons of God, if we believe on his name, and that name is Jesus. All right, if you believe that gospel, you will inherit the kingdom. You will inherit um, eternal life. You will be a son of God. And so that's, that's permanent. You can't undo that. Uh, just like your own child, if you had a son or a daughter, they would always be your, your child. You would never forsake them no matter what. So um, it's not about our works and our good deeds and what we do. There is only one thing that we can do. Okay? Let's see if you know what it is. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do? To be saved. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. So that's when they spake that word of the salvation. So the word of salvation that is sent to the, the God fearing people out here that want to receive um, peace, they want to receive 
rest in their souls. They want to receive the good things after this life. The only way to do it is to stop everything you're doing right now and believe the gospel that Jesus is God. He came to his own people, the Jews. They condemned him to the cross where he died for our sins. He was then buried, but he rose again on the third day and he was seen alive. Rejoice evermore. You do not have to worry about the life after death anymore. You will live forever. And we will always exist. So don't don't run from this gospel. Because if you run from this gospel, you're running from the only peace that we'll, you'll ever find. And that's through the Creator, Jesus Christ. He gets all the glory. Not us. So don't try to work your way to heaven. Don't try to be a good person and clean up your life to be accounted righteous. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we're saved by grace, right? Through faith, not of yourselves, it's the gift. Someone gives you a gift, can they take it back? No, that wouldn't be a gift. All right, eternal life is not a reward, all right? This isn't a race that we're running so that we get a reward, all right? We all are saved by grace. It is a gift to everyone, to every single person. You guys heard John 3.16 before. Check this out. It's one of the most popular verses in the world. For God so loved the world that he gave. Look at that. There's the giving, right? The gift. He gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So you're only condemned when you don't believe. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. I don't want that wrath of God abiding on you. I want you to have everlasting life, all of you. But there will be few, few people that do believe, very few. Romans, uh... For, remember, not of works, okay? For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward reckoned not of grace, but of debt. So don't work. Don't ignore this gospel and think, all right, no, nah, no. Yeah, Jesus is great and all, and he died for my sins, but... I'm going to make sure that I put in some extra effort here to make sure I know I'm saved. No, then you never then you never believed. You have to believe that he paid for all sins. You can't keep yourself saved. You know, you can't save yourself, so how could you keep yourself saved? But look at this. Very clear, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So, the ungodly are justified when they work not, my goodness, what do they have to do? But believe on him. My goodness, it's so simple. Believe that gospel. Believe it. What's that gospel again? Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. So this is where I receive. I received this gospel. It's the same gospel that Paul preached. I received that from another preacher. I'm just like you out there that has no clue as to what's going on. Or maybe you think you have a clue. But do you really have a clue? Do you actually know where you're going to be when you die? Do you have control over where your soul will be? No. You have no, you have no control whether you live or die today. You're at the mercy of your body. You're at the mercy of the Creator. All right? But He's extending His mercy to those that fear Him. So <laughs> now's the time. It says the beginning of the fear is the beginning of wisdom. So my goodness, 
If you have some fear, that's good for you because your heart is ready. You can believe this now and you'll never have to worry about what happens to your soul after death. So this is the gospel that I received. It was preached to me and I stand on it and I'm bold about it. I don't care how foolish I look. Y'all can laugh at me, think whatever you'd like. I'm not here to please man. I'm here to please God. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. So I didn't believe in vain. I kept it in memory. And that's why I've been preaching to you. Preaching exactly what Paul preached. Preaching what I believed on, that it was preached to me. And this is what I stand on. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. I already told you that. Jesus died for our sins. He died on the cross. His own people crucified him and condemned him. That's how he died. They wanted to see an innocent man dead. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And I said that precept too, the burial and the resurrection. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, and after that he was seen above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some have fallen asleep. So you have the Christ, who's this Messiah, the Savior of the world, Jesus, dying for our sins on the cross. His own people, the Jews, uh, sought, to, sought, to, sought to kill this innocent man. He then was buried, rose on the third day, and was seen alive. Over 500 saw him. It's a lot of people. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preached and so we believed. So, are you going to believe just be honest with yourself. Are you going to trust in what you can do for yourself in afterlife? Are you going to believe in yourself? Are you going to be fearful and trembling when they corner you for that mark of the beast? Once we're already gone, caught up with Jesus in heaven, it'll be too late. Then you'll have to be working your way. You're going to have to suffer and be killed if you don't worship. But today you can receive the Holy Spirit seems like the wiser option so uh yeah i hope there's a blessing to someone um attorneys a long time to be wrong so hope uh oops i hope this uh pricked your heart and that uh, your heart is burning because of it amen